Hey you, I'm Sue. Welcome to PNG Tuber Plus 101. This is a comprehensive beginner's guide to drawing, cutting, and setting up a reactive model using the 1.1.4 version of PNG Tuber Plus. I'll be showing all the steps you need to make a simple model like this one here, but you can also use the same techniques to make very complex looking PNG Tubers as well. Before we begin, you'll need to have existing familiarity with art programs such as Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, Photoshop, and any similar app that supports layers and transparent PNG exports. You'll also need to be comfortable navigating your own system files. We're going to be covering a lot of content in this video. If you already know how to cut model art or just need tips for understanding PNG Tuber Plus rigging physics, use the chapters in the description below to navigate this video. Let's start with the model art. If you're very new to cutting models for rigging, I'll be showing my whole process from start to finish. For folks who already know how to cut layers for rigging, feel free to skip ahead in the video. I'll be showing how I made my PNG Tuber chippy from the intro. PNG Tuber Plus has limited input functions, so the simpler you can keep your model, the better. I recommend sketching different components on different layers, but at minimum, you will need to plan the following five grooves. The topmost layer will contain any accessories or items that will layer over the face, like bangs and glasses. Underneath those, you'll need a group of layers for your facial features. At minimum, you will need one layer for your eyes open, eyes closed, mouth open, and mouth closed. If you'd like to differentiate between speaking and not speaking with your eyes open, then you can have eyes open 1 and eyes open 2. Your next group will contain all your head items. Things like your ears, face hair, and anything directly attached to your head that will not cover up the face can be combined here. Underneath all this is your torso. You can keep it simple by combining the body with the clothing items. However, if you have very flowy or oversized items like jackets, you can separate them on another layer, with the front side of the jacket layered over the body, and the inside of the back of the jacket underneath the body. Be sure to overdraw any layers underneath another one to avoid gaps. The last group of layers is just your bonus layers. These will contain anything that moves separately from the head or the body, like arms or toggles. Once you're happy with the sketch, you can start refining it. I find it easiest to start lining everything first, that way I can overdraw components as needed, and once all the boundaries are set, I'll add in colors and flats. You'll notice that I overdraw quite a few parts. The forearm clips into the hand while the elbow overlaps with the bicep and sleeve. The neck is also overdrawn and clips into the head. You'll need to overdraw any part of a layer that will move separately from the layer above it. This will prevent any gaps from showing in the final PNG tuber. The rest of this time lapse is just me finishing up lines, flatting, and adding simple shading. We're gonna speed through it though, just so the video isn't an hour long. back. I'm cleaning up the layers here and merging anything that doesn't need to stay separate from one another. If you're worried about committing to a merge, make a backup duplicate, then start merging. Here I've gone ahead and merged and labeled all of my cleaned up layers. You can see how I divided up the layers here. Any layer that is underneath another one is overdrawn, like the base hair under the bangs, the neck under the head, and so on. Now that everything is ready, I'm going to crop the canvas as small as possible. PNGTuber Plus has a limit to how tall the file can be. I'm saving a duplicate of my final larger layers and lowering the resolution so the canvas height is between 750 and 880 pixels. The more bounce you want in your model, the smaller your final size should be. Once your file is the right size, you'll need to export every layer as its own transparent PNG, but before you begin doing anything, here's some important things that you should know. Every layer you export as a PNG has to be the same size as your full canvas. When you import multiple layers into PNG Tuber Plus, the program will attempt to center all of them. This is fine if all the layers are the same size. Here I've cropped the layers incorrectly, minimizing empty space around each one. The purple dot represents the origin point of each layer. I'm going to try stacking the origin points like I did previously, and... yeah. 
PMG Tuber Plus doesn't know how items should be placed relative to each other. By exporting every layer at its full size, the empty space surrounding each item will align them correctly. Let's hop back to exporting the layers. Some programs like Photoshop and Krita have a built-in function for this, but if you're using Clip Studio Paint like me, buckle up and get comfy. You can speed things up a little with auto actions and keyboard shortcuts. If you click on the visibility toggle for a layer while holding down your Alt key, it will hide all other layers except that one, which speeds up the process substantially. I've been saving all of my PNGs in a labeled folder for later. When you first launch PNG Tuber Plus, you should be greeted with the default avatar. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see two sliders for audio, a mic symbol, and a pencil. If you don't see this interface, click into the program window. The interface will auto-hide itself when it's not actively selected. Click on the mic symbol to choose your input device and test it out. You should see the default avatar react. We'll go over the two audio sliders in more detail later, but for now, click on the pencil icon to enter editing mode. You'll notice two new features in the interface. First, an assortment of buttons in the top left. These are used to exit out of edit mode, add new sprites or layers to your current model, link sprites, replace sprites, duplicate sprites, save the model, and load an existing model. The slider controls how much the model will bounce when input is detected. On the bottom right, there is a guide for hotkeys for navigating and adjusting sprites. We'll start here first. Hit the escape key to open the local directory for PNG Tuber Plus. This is where you'll add your folder containing your exported layers, as well as where the program pulls loaded models from. Once you've moved your folder of layers into the directory, we can begin importing a new model. Click on the main body of the default avatar and select the red trash can icon to delete it. Now that we have a blank canvas, click on the add new sprite icon and open up the folder containing your PNGs. You'll need to individually add each one to the program in this way. Now that our layers are imported, let's take a closer look at the menu. Click on any layer or sprite to bring it up again. The top box previews what layer we on. The position notes where the origin of the sprite is relative to the origin of the canvas. The offset is where the origin of the sprite is relative to its original origin point. You can move the position by using WASD and the origin by holding down O while using WASD. Unless you want to make some fine-tuned adjustments, you shouldn't need to change the position of any sprites. This is due to us exporting all the layers at the same canvas size. You'll only need to adjust the offset or the origin point for items that will rotate about a point, but we'll get into this more later. For now, we'll focus on the Z index. This acts as your layers panel, or how you order the layers. You can navigate through different layers by either clicking on them, or by scrolling with your mouse wheel. You can lower or raise the index value using Q and E. The lower the index number is, the further back a layer is. You can go into the negatives for indexing, so give yourself enough space to arrange all the layers. Now that all the sprites have been indexed, let's set your blinking and talking toggles. Next to the trash can icon, there are two pink boxes crossed out. The first box can be cycled through mouth open and mouth closed. The second box controls eye open and eye closed. Pause the video here and toggle these for your eyes open 1 and 2, eyes closed, mouth open, and mouth closed layers. Once you're done toggling the blinking and talking setting, you can exit out of editing mode to check how it looks. Be sure your mic input is set correctly. At this point, we should save our model. Click the save icon, open up the folder containing your PNGs, and name your file. You can check if this saved properly by loading up your model afterwards. I'm going to demonstrate the next step in Clip Studio Paint. 
For this, we'll be focusing on any elements that will be rotating. In my case, I want to be able to rotate this arm. At the moment in PNG Tuber Plus, my origin point is dead centered. In order to create the rotating effect, I want to move this to here. This way, when I apply rotation physics, the arm will turn at the elbow. I can break this down further by moving the origin point of the hand down to where the wrist would be. This would allow me additional range of motion in the hand. First, we'll demo what it looks like when the origin point hasn't been changed from the default settings. As you can see, the bangs are trying to rotate around the center of the canvas. I'm going to fix the origin point so that it's at the top of the bangs, connected to the head. Now when I test it, you can see that the bangs swing from the top of the hair strands, which makes more sense. I've gone ahead and adjusted the origin points for rotating pieces in my model. This includes the arm, the hand, and the earrings. Once you finish adjusting the origin points for any rotating elements in your model, we can move on to physics and linking. PNG Tuber Plus allows you to add several types of physics. They can be categorized under movement, squash, and rotation. The frequency and amplitude sliders control how fast and how much a sprite moves in the X and Y directions. X controls left-right motion, while Y controls up-down motion. The next two categories, squash and rotate, are only visible when there is wide movement. Squash applies a swish and stretch motion, while rotational drag allows you to spin an item around its origin point. While you can individually adjust physics settings for each sprite, you can link layers together to make things easier. As a quick FYI, I'll be referring to the sprites that are linked to another layer as child layers. The anchoring sprite that child layers are linked to is the parent layer. Certain physics applied to a parent layer will affect a child layer, but not the other way around. To begin linking sprites, select the child layer you'd like to link, then click on the link icon in your upper toolbar. PNG Tuber Plus will then prompt you to click on the desired parent layer. Selecting the child layer again will show the preview with the parent layer in the corner and a new break link option by the trash can. In general, I like to link head items like the eyes and mouth along with any accessories to the head layer. I then link the head and any unlinked child layers to the torso. You can chain linkage like this together for better control over grouped items. Now that all my layers are linked, we can start working on the physics. For the time being, I have the bounce slider turned off just so I can click more accurately. We'll start with a pseudo breathing animation. Selecting your torso, apply a low Y frequency and amplitude. Everything should move with the torso as it should be your main parent layer. For additional effect, we can also increase the squash on the torso. We'll work on drag next. Selecting the bangs, I'm applying some squash and then also applying some drag. Drag will cause the motion of the hair to lag slightly behind the body. This is great for things that are very flowy. Next, we'll work on rotational physics. Adjusting the rotational drag to the left will cause counterclockwise motion when the model moves upwards. Likewise, rightwards adjustments will cause clockwise motion. If you have an item that will rotate, but want to limit how far it can rotate in either direction, you can adjust the minimum and maximum sliders below the red circle. Note that any rotational drag applied to a parent layer will only affect the position of the origin for a child layer. You will still need to adjust the rotational drag for child layers independently. For more complex items like my earring, the arch for my earring is comprised of a front layer and a back layer. To ensure that they rotate around the same point, I've matched the coordinates of their origin points. I'll speed run through rigging the rest of the physics. As a recap, things like position when applied to a parent layer will affect a child layer. Rotational drag will affect the position of a child layer, but not the rotational drag. Squash is completely independent from linking. If you'd like to apply squash to a child layer, you'll have to do them separately from the parent layer. Here, I've pulled up two different styles of applying physics. On the left, you have a baseline lower level of physics with bounce, 
the avatar is much more animated whenever I talk. On the right, I have increased the level of physics. While there is no bounce, the motion is a lot smoother and less distracting. You can go for either styles, or a combo of both. A lot of it will just be experimentation and whatever works for you. Once you're happy with the result, we can move on to toggling. Select the layer that you would like to toggle on and off. If you look at the bottom of the menu, you'll notice five different slots for toggles. At the moment, all five slots are light blue, meaning the layer you selected is active across all five states. If you would like a toggle to not show up in a certain state, you can toggle them on and off. In this case, I'll have the cap turned off in toggle state 2. With the glasses selected, I'll also toggle 2 off and 3 off. You can test this just by hitting 1, 2, and 3. This is stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3. Please note, there is no way to have two toggle states active at the same time. If you want to combine two toggles, you'll need to use up a third toggle slot where both are enabled. This does mean that you're pretty limited in the number of unique toggles you can have, as the combinations can add up very quickly. The last thing we'll go over in this tutorial is how to adjust audio settings. Exiting out of edit mode, we'll go over the two audio sliders in the bottom right hand corner. The bottom green bar is your opening threshold. This represents the minimum sound required for your program to acknowledge a sound as input. If you experience a lot of background noise, you can raise the threshold. The upper blue bar represents your release time. This is how quickly the mic switches from on to off after input has dropped. If you would like your PNG tuber to be very sensitive to these drops, you can increase the slider to the left. Now, whenever there's a slight pause, you can see that my model switches from on to off. If this is too distracting, you can slide it back down to the right. In summary for audio adjustments, Raise the green slider, or the opening threshold, to block out background noise. If you would like a more sensitive PNG tuber, slide the blue bar to the left, and if you would like it to be less jittery, slide it to the right. Otherwise, a lot of it will be experimentation based on your own environment. That's pretty much it for the tutorial! I hope this was a helpful comprehensive guide to setting up your own PNG tuber model, especially if you are new to cutting your own art. If you found the tutorial helpful, please leave a like! Until next time! <clears throat> oh shit, I was recording. <laughs>